So what we are doing today is we are tagging 12 manatees that are being released into Blue Springs State Park. Today at the Manatee Viewing Center in Apollo Beach, we were able to release Cherry Soda. It's the most we've ever released at one time. So some of them are going to go out um, here in Crystal River, some are going to go out in Tico, and some are going to go out in Blue Springs. Clearwater Marine Aquarium Research Institute's role in the MRP is as post-release monitoring. So after these animals have been rescued, rehabilitated, and then released, our job is to go out and monitor them to make sure that they do acclimate properly to wild behavior. We're actually going to be tracking these animals for the next year, and by putting this satellite gear, we're actually able to monitor where they're going, what they're doing, and then we can also go out every week and actually see what they're doing and make sure that they're actually eating and staying in fairly good body condition. And the reason for such a high number is that there was an unusual mortality event on the east coast of Florida in the Indian River Lagoon. Many, many manatees died leaving orphan calves due to the fact their mothers died from malnutrition and starvation. Now these orphan calves have are grown up and are in the size range to be released as they would normally be in the wild at the time they leave their mothers. There have been a whole series of algal blooms. They cloud up the water. The clarity decreases dramatically to the extent that the light can't reach the bottom. And if the light can't reach the bottom, then seagrass can't grow. And so when manatees were coming um, to stay warm and they arrived, they found, where's the food? It was virtually all the food had disappeared. So manatees have been starving um, and dying and also in need of rescue. What is just amazing though is through all the care from all the different facilities these animals have been able to survive. What is very sad though is to think about the fact that so many of these females gave up their lives for their calves because they were still nursing their calves. There was one that was even found next to its mom and its mom was emaciated. We are lucky enough to be able to post a lot of this information online so people can actually follow these animals after they go back out to the wild. So you can actually check out the website and see their movement, read our notes, and be able to kind of surgically watch these animals as they're adapting. Our hope is that by next winter, when they come back, they'll be in good body condition and we can take off all the gear. They can be wild animals and be successful and help the population.